Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Process Street Advanced Automations webinar. My name is Blake Bailey, and I'll be your host for today, and I lead the customer success team here at Process Street. During our roughly one hour webinar, we're going to go through pretty much everything there is to know about automating your workflows with Zapier and Process Street, and then take some time at the end to answer your questions. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time during the broadcast by clicking on the questions and answers button at the top of your screen. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. So since they pay my bills, I should first mention that Process Street is the simplest way to manage recurring workflows for your team. Using the system of templates and checklists, you can effectively store your institutional knowledge, collaboratively complete all of your most important tasks, record valuable data using forms, and most importantly for today's broadcast, automate your workflows with over 1,100 different integrations by way of Zapier. Because the platform contains all of these exciting features, our clients report that Process Street saves them valuable time, enables consistent high-quality work, increases overall accountability, and helps them to onboard their new employees quickly and efficiently. Understandably, these benefits have made Process Street one of the highest-rated services out there with hundreds of extremely positive reviews on sites like Captera and GetApp. All right, all right, all right. That's enough about Process Street for now. Let's talk about the other piece of this automation puzzle, and that is Zapier. Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect different digital services together seamlessly. Think of it like the glue, binding all of your different tools together. Want your billing system to talk to your CRM or your process tool to integrate with your dashboard? Zapier is the answer. They have over 1,500 different tools that connect to their platform, including things like Gmail, Zoho, Airtable, Trello, Process Street, Salesforce, and much, much more. So the basic principle of Zapier is that of zaps, triggers, and actions. If any of you have ever used IFTTT before, also known as if this, then that, it's the same idea, but mostly for business tools. A zap is an automation, like when you convert a lead into a customer in Salesforce, you want a welcome email to automatically get sent to them. That would be one zap. A trigger is a starting point for any automation. So in the previous example, that would be someone changing the status of a lead in Salesforce. An action, on the other hand, is the automated part that you actually want to happen as a result of that trigger. That's the email that gets sent automatically to the new customer without anyone having to write it. Simple. For Process Street, you have the option to use a new checklist being run, a new comment being made, a new attachment being uploaded, or a new task checked inside of a checklist. Those are all your available triggers for Process Street inside of Zapier. Now on the action side, you can automatically run a brand new checklist, or as of a few weeks ago, you can now also find and update existing checklists using Zapier. Uh, this is awesome because it allows you to automatically update your checklist with new data later on in your process and not just at the beginning. Say that you wanna send your new customer a survey to fill out or a document to sign. Now, once they actually do it, you'll, you can have the survey results or maybe the signed document automatically uploaded right into your checklist without you ever lifting a finger. All right, so that's enough of the theoretical stuff. Let's get into the basics of setting up your very first automation using Zapier. It's important to note that I'm going to be starting off extremely simple here. So this is literally the most simple Zap you can possibly go with there. So for you Zapier experts, uh, don't snooze off. This is still useful for you, but I want to make sure that everybody, no matter where you're at in terms of your experience with automations, you're all kind of at the same level once we get through here, okay? So anyways, I'm gonna start off real simple. I'm gonna jump into a much more advanced example after the break. We're gonna be doing a question break after I show you this example. And to build our first app, what we're gonna need to do is go into zapier.com and then we will be clicking on the button that says make a zap. However, as automations go, I've created a, essentially a quick link to that by clicking on this picture. All right, so when you click on make a zap inside of Zapier, this is what you would see. Right, so this is what's called the Zap Editor. And this is where you create every single automation that you're ever gonna create when you're dealing with Zapier. First off, the very first thing you're gonna need is a trigger. That's the thing that I mentioned earlier that kicks off automations for you. And in this particular case, what we're gonna be using is what's called Weather by Zapier. Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a Zap today that allows you to get a text every single day, 
if it is going to rain. So if it's going to rain today, I would go ahead and get a text around 7 a.m. saying, hey, here's the information for the day. You should probably bring an umbrella. Now, there we go. We're going to use this right here, this option here as the specific trigger for the weather by Zapier trigger. So here we go. Save and continue here. Next, we need to enter in the latitude and longitude for a particular location. I'll save you guys the time. You can always look it up if you want to set this up yourself. But this is mine for where I am particularly located here in North Carolina. There we go. Now this step right here, what this did is that it is running a test of this trigger. Every time that you set up a trigger or an action inside of Zapier, uh, you're gonna need to test it just to make sure that it actually works because you know that's kind of important. Uh, you don't have any mishaps or anything like that. So as you can see here, we've got lots and lots and lots of data about the forecast for the day. This is stuff that's getting automatically pulled in into Zapier here. Again, weather by Zapier as the trigger. Now, our trigger is set up and good to go, but we need to add in what's called an action, right? So what do we want it to do with this information? So in this case, we're going to add a step, and we're going to go ahead and click on the action slash search. So in this case, we're going to be doing an action, and for here, it's going to be SMS by Zapier. Awesome, there we go. So we're going to be sending a text. So an SMS, of course, is a text message, and I like it to be sending me a text ever, uh, whenever we are going to be, uh, whenever this is running, right? So every day, if it's going to rain at 7 a.m., uh, we want this to go ahead and, and get triggered, and then we want to send us a text with this information. So we're going to use SMS by Zapier. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just choose a random number. It doesn't really matter which one. I don't really care who it's coming from. And now at this stage, this is where it's really important because we want to go ahead and set up uh, essentially how that message is going to look every time that it runs. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be combining two sets of things. Essentially a static, uh, essentially a static set of words. In this case, we want the forecast, just like that. The max temperature for the day, because that's, you know, that's handy. I should know whether I should wear shorts or not. And the mid temperature, maybe I should bring a jacket. All right, now those are the static words. Every time that this text comes through, it's always gonna say these things, but we want some variable data, right? And that's where Zapier really, really comes in, right? So we wanna go ahead and pull in some data from the, the original trigger. In this case, we want the summary. What is the forecast for today? Well, in this case, it's gonna be clear throughout the day. I don't need an umbrella. What's the maximum temperature? You can pull that in. Today, it's gonna to be 83.23 degrees Fahrenheit. And for min temperature, That'll be 60.63 degrees Fahrenheit. Awesome. So let's go ahead and click continue here. And of course, we're going to test this as well. All right. So it's just sent a text that looks just like this. It's going to send that text every day, 7 a.m. if it's going to rain to let us know what the forecast is. If we don't get a text, it's not going to rain, in which case we definitely don't need to bring an umbrella. All right. So whenever you have set up your action uh, and your trigger, in that case, now you want to go ahead and click finish. And you wanna go ahead and name your zap to make sure that you know exactly what it is that this is going to do. So you want it to be something that's identifiable and easy, right? So in this case, uh, if it's going to rain, send me a text. See, very clear, I know what that's gonna do. And then finally, we wanna go ahead and turn this on. Whole point of that is that now, uh, by turning this on, it's gonna automate it, right, of course. So that in that case, every day, whenever this happens, without me having to ever remember this, it'll automatically run. And if it's gonna rain, I'm gonna get that text. Boom, there we go. My zap is now working and we're good to go. All righty. Okay. So again, that was a very basic example of a zap, literally the most basic possible example that we could do purely just to get our feet wet and just to show you guys the very basic components of how Zapier works. So it only gets more interesting from here, but before we get into my super zap, I'm going to stop here for a few minutes to answer some of the questions we have thus far. As a reminder, you can always submit questions at any time and I'll answer them now or towards the end of the webinar during our longer questions and answer session. All right, first question here, is there a process tree process that needs to run that zap? No, so that zap that I just showed you guys, again, very, very, very basic example. Uh, that is uh, purely inside of Zapier alone. Uh, typically your zaps will uh, utilize other services. So they usually will use, you know, process tree, Gmail, anything else. 
uh, to essentially run the uh, run the automation to pull data from to do searches to you know to send an email to whatever it might be. So typically your Zaps will use other services like Process Street. However, that one was purely just to show you uh, again the very 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 basic component using two utilities that Zapier provides you being weather and SMS. Uh, again, that's just to show you what a trigger and an action looks like. Uh, and essentially how you would set up some of the custom fields and static fields in there like we did with that text message uh, without, you know, pulling in other data sources or anything like that. And don't you worry, my next zap that I'm about to show you pulls in lots of stuff and creates lots of actions with a few different services, including Process Street. So that can be very interesting. Definitely stick around for that. All right, so I have another question here. In the Rain app, how hard is it to send the SMS to a group of numbers, say, from a spreadsheet? So it depends on what you want to use. Realistically, uh, SMS by Zapier is for a number that you actually own. Uh, so you have to verify it, that sort of a thing. Um, so if you have, uh, you know, a few numbers that are people that you, you know, can have confirm that you actually want them to receive these texts, right? So they actually have to verify, yes, I want to receive texts from Zapier. Uh, then you can absolutely do that. You would just set, essentially put in multiple actions and each action would be an individual text message. Um, if you wanted to do more than that, essentially to maybe another group or a listserv, you may want to use a different text service, which of course Zapier integrates with quite a few of them. So check those out and, uh, and then consider that. But the beginning of it would be very similar to the same there. Another question, do you plan to support Integromat as well? I also do use Integromat. I also use Microsoft Flow for a lot of my automations. Um, Process Tree doesn't necessarily have plans to integrate with them at the moment, but I will tell you right now that um, of integrations that Process Tree uh, would integrate with, our very first ones would be those aggregates, things like Zapier, Integromat, Microsoft Flow, essentially other services that allow you to integrate to a lot of services all at once. Those are the ones that we would be looking at first. So Integromat would be pretty high up on that list. I'll tell you that right now. All righty. So uh, I think that's probably good. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll for you guys. So I'm going to see what's happening here. What this is, I have a question. I want to know how many of you have used Zapier with Process Street before? So a couple of these, essentially some of the options here are, are that you've used Process Street but not Zapier, that you've used Zapier but not Process Street, that you've bo used both Zapier and Process Street, just not together, that you, you don't have to answer in the chat. I'm going to send it to you in a poll. Don't worry. Ready? There it goes. Awesome. 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 I'm going to leave this open for just about a minute or so, and then we'll go forward into the second part of this here. I'll let you guys know what the results are. Don't worry. All right, so what it's looking like here, wow, it is looking pretty uh, pretty well split. Um, looks like right about here we got so far, again, I'm going to give it about another 10 seconds just to see here. Looks like I've got a ton of responses, 76 of 106 people, 71% people voted. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close it off here. Uh, end result is roughly 28% of people. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Boom. Uh, roughly, okay, so 27% of people have used both Zapier and Process Tree together. I'd love to hear that. That means that you guys, obviously, this is very relevant to you. And the example that I'm going to show to you is going to seem a little familiar, uh, but maybe a little bit more advanced than what you're used to. So it's going to be great. Second option here that you have used Process Tree, but not Zapier. You guys are good Process Tree users. That's awesome. We love that. Uh, next option down is that you've used both Zapier and Process Tree, just not together. Also good. It's tied with that is that you haven't used Process Tree or Zapier. That's about 14 of you. And then finally, uh, that you've used Zapier, but not Process Street. There's 10 of you that have done that. So Zapier users that have not used Process Street. Got it. Awesome. So welcome, everyone. And thank you so much for participating in that poll. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and start moving forward here. So, so, so there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is about that time. You have made it to the part of the broadcast where I'm going to start showing you some super zaps. The automation I'm going to be showing you today is actually the initial setup for an automation that we'll be starting to use very soon here at Process Tree Customer Success. But you guys get to see it first. As a part of our success package, uh, we like to ensure that our customers are well supported at all stages of their time in the platform. So to aid in this mission, we conduct quarterly business reviews, also known as QBRs or account reviews. Uh, when, when we conduct these, we like to prepare some documentation. Realistically, we like to prepare a slide deck and maybe some other information that's useful on a customer's account history to share with them and to help us provide tailored recommendations on improvements. 
However, you know, preparing these documents and you know, preparing that entire deck uh, can be extremely time intensive, which means because of that, we have to do less of them. And that is where automation comes in. If we can reduce the time required to prepare for the meetings, that means that we can help more people. All right, so how do we do this? First, we needed to jump into our CRM, close.io. And specifically, we're gonna be jumping in right here to a, uh, to a lead here for Tesla. So we use close.io as our CRM, and if you might use Salesforce, Soho, um, lots and lots of other tools, of course, you can use any of those as well as many, many more with Zapier. So uh, even though this is gonna be closed, since that's what we use, keep in mind that you can, of course, integrate lots and lots of other tools. It doesn't have to be just this one, and it'll work almost exactly the same as what you're about to see here. All right, so inside of here, of course, as CRMs go, we contain all of our customer data. So information about you know their website, their location, their opportunities, um, all of these different things, and of course, custom fields with all of the different pieces of data. Now, the really cool thing about using Process Street with something like a CRM is that you can use what's called a checklist run link, okay? Now, what that is, that's a link that pretty much takes you directly into a brand new instance, and in that way, a brand new checklist off of whatever template that you want. So a template, of course, is a process. Uh, in this case, of course, we have the QBR process. So the quarterly business review process. What do we do every time that we want to do an account review with a customer? Well, what we're able to do here is, of course, you can go into Process Street and then find that process and then click Run Checklist and then type in some data about that customer. But instead, since we already have that data here inside of this lead, what we can do is we can just click on this link that we've built right here. And what that's gonna do is that'll automatically take us directly into that checklist and fill out some of the form fields in that checklist with data that we already have here inside of Close. Again, you can do this with other different uh, other services as well, uh, but again, I'm just gonna use Close because that's what we have. So let's go ahead and run this link to see what that looks like. All right, so as you can see here, it's creating a new checklist. It's gonna even tell us that. There it is. And now, boom, here we are. This is a brand new checklist. So just created this second. Uh, it's named Tesla because I told it to be named Tesla. The client name is of course Tesla. It's got its client ID here. That's important that you always pass in some sort of reference data into your checklist when you decide to run them this way. And that way you can essentially close the loop and have a good reference to look back and maybe update the lead later on. And that's a sneak peek of something that's gonna happen, you'll see. And of course we've got other things like the platform ID, maybe other, sense, other pieces of data that are relevant to you uh, that are gonna come from close you'd like to fill in here. The other thing that I'm gonna do in this particular task is set a meeting date. And let's go ahead and set it for maybe like the 31st. Boom. As soon as we did that, you may have noticed that these right here, so these, uh, uh, these tasks now have due dates. That's because we're using dynamic due dates. It's a feature inside of Process Street that allows you to set dates on tasks automatically relative to something else. In this particular case, relative to the meeting date. This allows us to make sure that we're getting reminders uh, in the appropriate time relevant to, you know, essentially each of these different things that need to happen in preparation to the quarterly business review meeting that we're having with the customer. I manually updated this. Of course, you could even automatically update this. There's tons of ways you can automate things. Uh, but of course, I just wanted to show you how this worked here. So let's go ahead and complete this task and move forward. All right. So this is the really important task here for this particular checklist. So what happens at this stage in the process typically, right, is that, you know, we've decided we're going to go ahead and do the QBR meeting with a particular customer. So I've got to go into Google Drive, I got to go into Google Drive right? I got to go find my you know, a slide deck for another customer, maybe a template or something like that, but find a slide deck. And then I got to go through and, you know, pull up all the information for a customer, maybe through our CRM, other tools we might use, et cetera. And then I got to go ahead and just manually type in each of those pieces of information, replacing in, you know, each of the different places that it needs to go inside of our deck, right? So it's a bunch of manual labor there is what I'm trying to get across. And, you know, it takes a while. Well, that's why we want to automate this because why are we doing that manually if we can have it done for us? So in this case, first off, we've got a, a drop down here that's just create deck, yes or no. Um, this is not necessarily something that you have to include, but it's something that I do recommend as a best practice is that if you, especially inside of Process Street, if you have a task that you are using for an automation, 
something like this one, um, that you have a fail safe. You have essentially a, a place where you're confirming a required field like this. You're confirming that, yes, I would like this to go ahead and kick off the automation. So it's just essentially a double uh, proof, right? So you have to uh, prove it twice, once by checking this off, twice by actually having this being yes. So say, yes, I would like you to create the deck. If this is no, it won't do it, but you can keep going forward anyways. So that's the whole point here. And I'll show you where that comes into play in just a moment. Next, this technically isn't a Zapier automation, but it is definitely something that's really handy and I wanted to share with you guys. So you can build links into your templates here inside of Process Street, of course. And inside of those links, you can, of course, pull in data from other places inside of your checklist. In this particular case, what I have set up here is a quick link that pulls in the client name from this field. It combines it with the word logo, so Tesla logo, and it's going to do a Google search for images that have a transparent background. So instead of having to go to Google, go to Google Images, search for Tesla logo, then switch the settings to transparent, all I have to do is click this button. There we are, and there we go, Tesla logos, nice and easy. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and save this image. Just like this, I'm actually gonna save it to my desktop. There we are, perfect. Now, let's go ahead and upload that file right back into here. There we are. And now what's gonna happen when I check this task off is that it's going to automatically create the deck for us. Now, uh, the whole point of this logo is just so that it includes a logo nicely in the deck, right? So it personalizes it for the customer in addition to their name and other pieces of information. Uh, but, you know, it's a nice quick way to, that, to put that in there and personalize it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and complete this task and that is going to be the trigger for our automation. Now, it only takes about five seconds for that automation to run, really, it's very, very quick. However, while that's going, what I wanna do is go ahead and show you what's happening in the background. First off here, let's go into the deck. So what we're using here is Google Slides uh, because it integrates with Zapier and allows you to use variables. So this is just a template of a deck for our account reviews, as you can see here. And anytime that you put anything in these little curly braces, just like we have here, like we have down here for client logo, like we have here for client name, and like we have here for sign up date, members, guests, sessions, all these other sorts of pieces of data, what's gonna happen is that uh, Google Slides and Zapier will know that this is a place where data is gonna get inserted. And you can do this for Google Slides, you can do it for Google Docs. So if you wanna create something like a Word doc or a PDF automatically when you complete your checklist, you can do it this way. Essentially you just format it, put in these variables just like this, really pretty, uh, and then automatically we're gonna be able to pass data into here using Zapier. So really, really awesome stuff. And of course that's included with things that are static, like pieces of information that aren't really gonna change. And of course, if we need to change them, we only need to change it once. Right, so we change it once and every time we use it from that, from then on forward, it'll automatically be the correct updated information or maybe new features or whatever else it is that we wanna share with our customer. Okay, so we've got variables, we've got static pieces of information coming from a template inside of Google Slides. The other piece of this, of course, is the Zap and that's why you guys are here, right? So let's get into that. So this is the first Zap of two, right? That's working on this particular process. Let's get on in there. And what's gonna happen inside of here is pretty much, let's actually reload that for a second. There we are. So what's gonna happen inside of here is quite a few different things. This is actually a relatively long zap. It's about uh, six or seven, uh, about seven uh, pieces long. Uh, six actions, one uh, trigger. Ironic that Zapier, there we go, perfect. Zapier's taking its time this time. All right, so as you can see here, seven, seven pieces to it, six actions, one trigger. So this actually follows the same concept as the previous example that I showed you guys, uh, where you have a trigger and you have an action. And realistically, again, we have six actions. It's called a multi-step zap. It is a premium feature of Zapier, so you do need to be on one of their paid plans to use a multi-step zap, but it's extremely useful considering that you can combine everything into one automation rather than running a bunch. So in this case, it's triggered off of new task checked. That was us checking off the task inside of the Tesla checklist. As you can see here, that's off of the quarterly business review process. That's the template that we ran this off of, as you can see right up here. And then this is the task, right? Check this task to create QBR deck. You can see, check this task to create QBR deck. We essentially right there were able to decide that when you check that task off 
off of any checklist that you run off of this template, we want this to kick off the automation. That's the first step. Next, we have a filter. Now this is that uh, essentially that, uh, that fail safe that I mentioned earlier where there's a checklist form field that's just create deck question mark. If that contains yes, then it will continue. And if it doesn't contain yes, it will stop. And pretty much that's just gonna ensure that nobody ever checks that off, not meaning to create the deck. Uh, this means sure that they are absolutely certain that they want the deck to be created and they wanna go forward. Next, what it's gonna do is it's gonna use the lead ID that we provided it right with that run link earlier. It's gonna grab that lead ID. And it's gonna search close. Of course, like I mentioned, you can have it search Salesforce, you can have it search whatever else that you want um, rather than close. That's obviously what we use. But this is where it's gonna use that reference data to find that lead, specifically Tesla, this one right here. It's gonna find that lead and pull in all of its data into here. And as you can see, if we drop into here, you'll see a massive amount of data is pulled in. Everything that you would see inside the lead file is being pulled in automatically there. Now, the next thing is we want to go ahead and grab uh, one of those specific pieces of data being the date that that customer signed up. You can see here that it's this, but then it's got a bunch of ugly stuff after it. And that's just the time code, right? And that's not fun. We don't want to show that to the customer. They don't need to see that. So instead, what we want to do here is we're using format. This is the formatter by Zapier, right? It's a great utility. I highly recommend that you use it. It essentially allows you to format your data, whether it be dates, times, numbers, text, splitting things, doing all different sorts of things, doing lookup tables, et cetera. Definitely use, check out formatter if you've never used it before. It's probably the most useful utility that I use all the time. So anyways, in here, we're gonna do is we're gonna take this date. We're gonna format it into a prettier date being 2006-01-22, just like that. It's gonna come out looking like this. We can even change the uh, time zone if we wanted to as well, but we're not, it's good as it is. So there we go, it looks like this when it comes out. Now, this is the real big important part of this, right? So this is uh, in relation to this deck that I showed you guys earlier. So it's pulling from that particular template that we are using, as you can see there. It's gonna pull in the client's name and then a process street account review so we know what customer we're doing for, doing this with. We're gonna make that link, uh, we're gonna make this presentation shared. So if we wanted to, we could send somebody this deck, uh, essentially the deck itself, if we wanted to, they can go ahead and see it right there inside of Google uh, Slides. Now, all of those variables like client name that I showed you earlier, right? Like right there, see? That's how it's gonna look inside of Zapier. Client name, client logo, sign up date, members, guests, sessions, templates, checklist, last checklist run. So essentially it pulls in all those variables that we created just by putting curly braces around some words and it pulled it directly into here. And then all we had to do was click on this just like we did earlier to go ahead and insert the data from close or you know from the formatted data like we have right here. So it pulls in all of the information from process street, from close, from our formatter, and it's gonna combine all of that into the deck and create a brand new uh, presentation from that template with all of that merged data. Again, all in the background without us ever having to lift a finger. Next, what we wanted to do, and this is the really cool part, because again, you couldn't have done this more than like a few weeks ago, is we wanted to find the checklist, the checklist that kicked this off to begin with right up here. We want to go back and we want to find that checklist. We're just gonna use the checklist name uh, to find it right off of the quarterly business review process. We wanna find the one that's active. It's just gonna find that particular checklist and then it's going to update it. And specifically what it's gonna do here is it's gonna go ahead and you know, pull up that checklist and it's gonna update it with links back to the deck. So what it's gonna do here is that we've got a couple form fields inside of here right, they look like this. I haven't refreshed yet, that's why they are blank. But what we want to do is we want to come back here, find this checklist and then stick the PDF and the drive link, uh, the direct link, you know, to the deck right here in these form fields for us. So look, right, I'm gonna refresh. And boom, there we are. Now those decks are already there. Again, all I had to do is check this off and I could have just refreshed the page about five seconds later and then boom, these are automatically there. The deck has been created. This has been updated. The data is formatted. It's been pulled. Everything is done again for us. What is normally a very long process has now become about five seconds of me doing nothing. So again, that's what I did here. So it automatically updates that with those links just as you're seeing here. Really cool thing about this is that, of course, we can go right here if we want to open up that deck 
as you can see, boom, Tesla, there's the logo. I know it's not got a transparent background. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't, but that's okay. So anyways, here we go. Tesla's right there. There's sign up dates right there. Members, guests, web sessions, active templates, active checklists, and the last checklist run date. When did they last run a checklist in Process Street? Important pieces of data for us. Of course, for you, if you were running this process, you could have this be whatever data points you want. You can have this look however you want, but this is ours. That's why it looks like this. So inside of here, again, this is it's pulling in all of this data from our different services, creating this deck automatically, naming it appropriately, setting it to be shared, and then giving us the link. And on top of that, if you're happy with how this looks, right, you're happy with how this deck looks, all you have to do is click this button right here. And now you automatically have a PDF. It's gonna open once it completes. There we go. So right here, we've got a nice, beautiful PDF of this that you can actually have automatically sent to your customer if you want to, sent to the account manager or wherever else that you would want, right? So you can have this automatically sent wherever you like, or as we did here, just automatically being pushed right back into this exact same checklist that we had create this in the first place. Nice and easy. Now, something else you may notice is that I have a task here that says deck created, right? So what this is, is that maybe you have an account manager or somebody else who you'd like to get notified once this deck has been created. And so what happens here is that uh, we're using conditional logic. It's another feature inside of process street so that once these fields have a value, doesn't matter what the value is, but once they have a value, this task will show. And because we have Rick here automatically assigned to this task, what's gonna happen is that he'll get the notification as soon as the deck has been created. I didn't even have to reach out to him, right? So he can just go right here and he can actually click on these links to go right into the deck as well. That's just a quick link that uses those same variables from here and just passes them off into a really nice looking uh, quick link that he can just click on to grab each of those decks. Of course, we can email them to him or anything else that we want to, but this is a nice way for him just to come into Process Street, maybe make some, mention, make some notes, mention me about something. We'll kind of talk back and forth about it and then, you know, again, finally complete this when we're done. All right, so we have a deck. It's been created automatically. It took me about two seconds, right, to click one link, grab a logo, click another, check another task. The deck's done, ready, created. Rick has it. He's all good to go. He can send that to the client, whatever needs to happen. But now we're in the actual call with the client. So let's take some notes. This is again using form fields inside of Process Street. So general call notes, it went well. These are terrible notes, but I'm gonna keep them short for you guys so I don't bore you to death. Recommended improvements, nothing. Maybe more automations, of course. Complete this task, right? More things, current and future usage, current usage of system. Uh, a ton, using it a ton, potential for huge uses of system, use it more. Right, awesome. Expansion potential, we'll say yes. And feature requests, uh, none. Product feedback, we love it. And support feedback, you guys rock. Man, I'd be happy with this, it'd be so nice, but also these are way too short, it's not realistic. There we go, so now we check that off and let's move on to the last task here. This one is pretty self-explanatory as you can see. What this does is that once we check this task off, it's going to send all of our notes and the deck right back into our CRM. So it's gonna go back and update this automatically. So I don't have to go typing in two places, don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff. All we have to do here is check this off. Boom, that, that completes the checklist. We get a whole big raining New Year's Eve of confetti. And as you'll see here, give it a second, give it a second, it'll happen, I promise. I may need to refresh. I probably do need to refresh, that's okay. There we go. So there we are. So it automatically pulls in all of our notes into a nice formatted way, just like this. Let's actually take a look at how this particular automation works as well. Here we go. Let's go back into Zapier. All right. So this one is actually more simple, as you can tell from the last automation that had seven steps. This is just two, except why, the reason why I want to show you this one is because it's using a relatively new feature of Zapier called Pass, something that you definitely want to consider. So this is similar to conditional logic in Process Tree. It essentially allows you to have different conditions to allow your, your apps to kind of do different things based on the situation. And the situation that we want to control for in this case, of course, we've got new tasks checked, right? So as soon as you check this off, 
pretty self-explanatory. It's going to go ahead and send the notes to the CRM. But we've got two paths, A and B. The first path, A, is whether or not there is a QBR deck. You know, do they have a QBR deck? In this particular case, A is yes, they do. So in this case, checklist form fields, create deck is yes, in which case it'll move forward with this particular path. And the whole point for this is that what it's going to do is going to go ahead and create the note, and it will include the link to the deck, just like that. So of course, we can go ahead and if we wanted to make this simpler, we can of course just, you know, if it doesn't have a deck, we'll just keep QBR deck here and let it be a null value or no value. But to make it nice and pretty, we can have a second option here that's no QBR deck. And in this particular option here, you'll see that's a similar thing, but no QBR deck uh, option in there. And that's just going to make sure that it's always clean. Uh, and realistically, the whole point of this is just to show you guys how paths work. You can have up to three paths, A, B, and C at the moment, uh, but we've only got A and B because that's all we need. All right, so just to review really quickly here what happened. Uh, first off, we started off here inside of our, uh, our CRM being closed, but again, you can use anything that you want. And what we did here is we used a checklist run link right here, so we to run the QBR checklist. So we clicked on that, that took us right here automatically and it pushed in a bunch of data from close into our form fields and named the checklist with the name of the client. Next, we went into here and we used this link to automatically just go in and grab the company logo. Uh, so that was nice and easy, right? And we just used, uh, essentially built that link into the template there. Then we uploaded the logo to a form field here, just a file upload form field inside of our checklist to automatically just get that into our deck for us. We checked this task off and that automatically then ran this nice long zap, which of course ran through a filter, found the lead, grabbed some data, formatted the sign up date to be nice and pretty, merged all of that data together in our new presentation template from, from Google Slides. It found the checklist that we originally kicked this off from and then it updated that checklist with the links right back to those decks. We never had to go into Google Slides and into any of the other services to try and find this stuff. It automatically just did it all for us. And then it notified Rick that that stuff had been updated automatically, letting him know, hey, this thing is good to go. Come on in here and grab it. I don't even have to let him know, just done. And then we, we actually went through the meeting, filled out our notes, and then at the end of it, we were able to just check this task off and walk away, and we could just trust that all of our notes were gonna be automatically pushed into the, into the lead right here so someone else can see it, uh, and it was gonna automatically know whether or not there should be a deck right here, and then it'll include that link or not include it based on whether or not there is or isn't a deck. Pretty cool, right? All right. So that was just one example of what you can do using Process Street and Zapier. However, you can do literally billions of other things with Zapier. And this is just one, again, relatively advanced way. Other things that you can do include, you know, the creation of dashboards like this. So you run a checklist that creates a, you know, a, maybe a field in something like Airtable, and then you have it automatically update that each time. And then you can do time tracking and all those sorts of things there. Again, that's dashboards. Uh, you can also do automatic legal document creation, maybe through HelloSign, DocuSign, something like that. So you check the task off and instead of a, a deck being created, maybe it's a actual legal document that gets sent to maybe a new customer or a lead or a vendor to have them sign it, right? So there you go. And then once they sign it, that can go back and update your checklist and let you know that it's been signed. That's another example of an automation. You can also, you know, create events, maybe an entire series of events for an entire year, or even a marketing campaign, all those sorts of things. You just set it up inside a process tree just by saying, that looks good. These, these data points look right to me. You check off a task and that just kicks it off for you. Uh, so you can even format data and run advanced code using some of Zapier's built-in utilities, pair all of that, you know, with the power of process street and any other tools that you guys use. And you have a hub for all of your processes that's process stream, with spokes out to each service and Zapier as the glue holding them all together through automation. And at the end of the day, you're left with a whole pile of time that you can use for better things like going to Fiji. That's right. With more automations, you can spend more time on a beach somewhere while your systems do the work for you. The automation I showed you today saves about five minutes of time running and filling out the checklist, another 20 minutes of time doing all the research and creating a custom deck, Another five minutes of time after that, getting all of the links, generating a PDF, updating our checklist, and then sending it out to all the interested parties like Rick. And then finally, about another 10 minutes of time, you know, collating all of those notes and then drafting them up all real pretty and then updating our CRM being closed. Uh, and that means a grand total of about 40 minutes 
saved every single time that we run this automation. We do an average of about 10 account reviews per week, about 40 per month because of that, about 480 per year. And if you multiply 480 account reviews per year times the 40 minutes that we save each time that we run this automation, that equates to a grand total of, drum roll please, 19,200 minutes or 320 hours or over 13 days, nonstop days of time saved by two fairly simple automations and a good process. And that is literally about two weeks in Fiji, or I mean, wherever else you wanna go, but Fiji's pretty sweet, right? I mean, look at this picture. So using Process Street with automations and specifically Process Street with Zapier, of course, trips to Fiji are up and manual labor is down. So now for the fun part, uh, when dealing with automations, just like anything else, there are definitely some important considerations to keep in mind. First, you need to always run tests of your automations, both while, both while you're building it and after you've completed them. This is you know, light development work. It's not real development, but it's light development work. So trial and error should be expected. And for a service like Process Street, you also wanna ensure that when you run a test checklist for your Zap, that your checklist remains active. So if you check off the last task, right, you know, as we were setting this up, uh, and that completes the checklist, just go and click reactivate uh, just to make sure it goes back to being active again, just for the test. Uh, so that way, you know, Zapier can go ahead and find it. From that point forward though, after you have, you know, set up your Zap and turned it on, it doesn't matter if your last task, you know, is checked off and completes the checklist, it'll still trigger your automation in Zapier. It's just purely for setting up the test. I'm telling you this just because that's a big uh, thing that people run into and I wanna make sure you're all aware of it. All right, so. Next, after you have built your Zap, you need to make sure that any updates you make to services connected to your automations don't disconnect your Zap down the road. So if you change maybe a form field in Process Street or the name of a, of a custom field in your CRM that you use in your Zap, you're gonna wanna make sure you go back into Zapier and just you know, change the field or just check to make sure that it's still pulling it correctly. Um, luckily, it's extremely easy to do this uh, just because it, you know, if you update that one field, you, you'd only need to go back in and update the one field inside of Zapier, not the whole automation. Everything else is all good to go. Now, in terms of habit building, right? Uh, that's the hardest thing to do, right? Uh, the best one that you should build is that of defaulting to automation. From now on, I'm telling you this, so if there's only one thing you take from this, it should be this. From now on, before you start doing any task, whether it be sending an email, scheduling an event, or realistically anything, ask yourself this question. Have I done this before? And am I gonna do this again? If the answer to one of those questions is yes, then you have a good candidate for automation. You, you just need to set it up, you know, you need to set up any automation before you can actually use it. And before you set it up, you actually need to identify the potential, right? You need to see that you actually need to create that automation. So every time you go to do something from now on, just be like, I keep doing this over and over again. Why don't I automate it? There you go. All right, now, uh, not all processes are good cases for automation, right? So even if they appear to be, uh, they might not be. So before automating something, always ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish by doing this? What's the end goal here? And then ask yourself that question another 10 more times. Eventually you'll get to the root outcome of uh, what you're aiming for there. And uh, then you'll be able to determine the best way to get there with your current resources. Uh, so if your process sucks, don't automate the sucky process, make it better first and then automate the better process. All right, now, once you have begun automating, right, you're gonna also want to consider uh, the full cycle flow of your automation. The example that I gave you guys uh, started and ended in close, right, our CRM, which ensured that data was passed seamlessly between all of our tools. Unidirectional automations can lead to some big problems. For example, without that output data, essentially our notes being passed right back into close at the end of that checklist, nobody would know that we ran uh, a QBR for Tesla, right? If they went into close, it would look like they never did. They probably would go and click that link and try and run another one, create another deck, reach out to them. It'd be embarrassing. Don't do that. Uh, make sure that your data is getting passed back to the source whenever you're creating an automation. All right. Now, uh, finally here, uh, the other thing you want to consider is whether to automate or not to automate. Outside of a process being good or bad, as I previously mentioned, some things are actually better done manually. This can be because the process is extremely quick and easy, and then an automation is just unnecessary. You're going to spend more time setting it up versus actually needing to, uh, to, to use it, right? So the other thing here is that maybe a higher level of supervision is needed 
Uh, so it might be something that you can automate, but maybe there's little considerations that you need to really look at and have human eyes on, right? So sometimes you can build a hybrid automation where it's got a QA step where you're kind of uh, your quality analysis step here where you're going to be checking it and making sure that it's good uh, before it actually does all the other stuff. Process Street is perfect for that. It gives you a place to go ahead and check those things before you keep going. Uh, finally, you always want to document your zaps, right? So both in the way that you name your zaps, uh, like I did earlier, and in tools like Process Street. This ensures that the inner workings of your automations don't exist solely in your brain, but are offloaded to a more efficient and secure place. And what that means is that no one is going to bug you about how it works while you're out on your PG vacation or, you know, where again, wherever you are. All right, now it's about that time to answer some more of your questions. I'm gonna bring up your questions now to start answering. Uh, keep sending them in. We're gonna try and get through as many as we can. We can't necessarily get through all of them. Uh, I see quite a few here, which is awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, but keep submitting them. I'm gonna try and read through these and try and get to them as much as I can. I've also got help from Jason and Dina, and I believe Tony as well from my team here uh, that are kind of reading through things and, and going through. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start answering these. Just give me a moment to read through and pick my, uh, my favorite first ones. All right, so I'm seeing some questions here on uh, how to create smart links like I did with the Google Tesla image. Let me show you that really quick because I can do that. So if we go here, I'm actually gonna go into the template editor right here inside of process stream. And first off, let's go down to, I believe this one, there we are. So there's that link right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that just like this. I'm gonna click on the link button. This is how you build any link inside of process stream. You can also press control L like you're seeing there. And this is what the link looks like. I'm gonna actually go ahead and copy that for you and show you what it looks like all written out. Boom. So. If you wanna set one of these up, what you need to do is you just go to Google or I mean any other service too, right? That you can do a search in. Go to Google and search for something. I usually search for something stupid like purple or whatever, just a word that I'm gonna be able to see really quickly. And as you can see here, Q is what usually how this works. So search Q equals, this is a variable here. So this is where we're gonna pull in from right here, variables from within our, uh, our checklist. In this case, it's customer logo or rather client name, sorry form.client name, you can see it's right there. And then percent 20 is just how you'd make a space. We do have some information on this, by the way, about how to build links inside of your, uh, inside of your templates. So you can see about some information about this, but percent 20, then logo. And then the rest of this is, again, I just copied this directly from Google. I set my settings in Google images to, again, Google images and then transparent. Uh, and then I had searched for something random, right? And I just replaced that random bit with client name, this variable, and I just did the percent 20, then logo. So whatever their name is, space, logo, it's searching for transparent images. And then all I did is I copied all of this, cut it, and then pasted it right here inside this link builder, just as you see right inside of here, and then boom, and I don't ever have to go and do that search again. I just need to click on the link and we would be good to go. Go ahead and discard these changes and get back to some other questions. All right, so another question here, is PowerPoint online supported as well? So PowerPoint, uh, they do have some things through Zapier. Um, uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm not 100% sure if you can do uh, some of the variable stuff that I did. I know for a fact Google Slides supports that, but uh, uh, you may not be able necessarily to use those same sorts of things. So actually Office 365. It might not be, okay, yeah, actually I was wrong. So there is not PowerPoint on here. Do use Google Slides. It's free, to be honest with you. So, I mean, you're gonna, you're able to get, uh, in addition to the PDF that I showed you guys of this that I was able to get, you can actually automatically also get a PowerPoint presentation. So build it in Google Slides, like I did here, and then just get it exported as a PowerPoint presentation. And that's where you're gonna be able to get around that. It's gonna be a lot better for you and again, you have that option there. So if I pull this here, look, create presentation from template. You can see there's tons of things here. Don't even worry about all this. If I scroll all the way down though, you can see we've got down here, these are, uh, this will give you things like the PowerPoint presentation. I think that's one of these down here. So definitely pull that uh, and then work from there rather than working with PowerPoint, uh, just because that'll allow you to use those variables that Google will allow you to use. Another question here, where did I pull the variables from? So a few different places, uh, of course, 
Uh, that link I showed you pulled the variable from this field right here uh, to use in this link. The variables that I'm using inside of this, right, this is actually being pulled from a bunch of places uh, throughout this process, right? So it's pulling, if I go right back up here, it's pulling variables from, you can see, this is closed, this is icon. It's pulling from process tree. This is pulling from formatter. It's originally from close and gets formatted to be pretty. Uh, so it's pulling all those variables right there just like that. And it knows that the variables exist because inside of the template, all I did is I wrote a word, client name, and I put curly braces around it, okay? So if you ever have any questions about this stuff, about how this goes, we'll include the link to the doc on how you set this sort of a thing up. But uh, the way if you want to know how to do this, um, just look up uh, Google Slides variables, okay? Google Slides templates variables. And it'll tell you all about that. Realistically, Google Slides templates, and then you'll be able to see the variable part. I think it's in that same article there, but definitely check that out. And again, Google Docs, you can do the same thing too, and we definitely use that as well. All right, so let's see here, another question. Um, how do I create those decks on Google Slides? Is there a template or would I make them from scratch? So this is a template, right? It's in the template gallery. Um, pretty much you just go to your guys' Google Slides and then all you have to do is click on uh, the templates, right? So you just say, I wanna create a new template. I forget exactly where that is, but I'll let you guys find that uh, in there. But there is a way, definitely just go ahead and Google it, Google Google Slides templates. It'll tell you everything you need to know about that. All right, is there any ability to manually script zaps? Um, so it depends on what you mean by manually scripting them. Um, if you wanted to do something a little bit more intensive than what you're seeing here, uh, then what you may wanna consider is for one, if you're talking about manually uh, controlling the connection to some service. So maybe there's something that you wanted to do that goes beyond the available triggers or actions for that particular service. Um, what you're gonna wanna look at is, first off, webhooks by Zapier. That's the name of the, uh, I'm actually gonna go into here. That is the name of the, the utility, webhooks by Zapier. And then this allows you to essentially create a custom request that essentially pushes, uh, that works with either webhooks going on the trigger side, or the API for a particular service on the action side. So a lot of times I have a ton of zaps that use webhooks or use the API requests here to just do something that you know isn't currently offered inside of Zapier specifically. Um, this will actually also allow you to connect to services that aren't even actually connected to Zapier. So as long as it has an API, you can still connect to it using Zapier um, yourself, you just gotta use the webhooks here. It's a little bit more advanced, so I won't get into too much detail, but definitely look that up just to see some more information. All right, so do you always need two curly brackets? Uh, yeah, so for uh, specifically for Google Slides, it is uh, two curly brackets that you do need to use just like this, it's this exact format. Anything else will not work. Different services use different things, but this is specific to Google Slides if you want that to work as a variable. Does it create a new version of the deck or it just gets edited for each client? It is a brand new version every single time. So as you can see, I moved over to here, right? Of course, I've been testing this out, so I've got a bunch of them, right? So I prepared for this, but this right here, there's Tesla. So it, this is the original template and essentially what it's doing is it's making a copy, but it's a merged copy, right? So it's a, it's a copy, but it's merging in a bunch of new data, essentially replacing those variables in that copy with the variable, with data from wherever it is that you wanna pull from, specifically, of course, Zapier. All right, so if you decide to modify the deck, how would you refresh the PDF? So that's actually the beauty of this. So um, this is a link rather than a, a solid document. So if you update that deck, right? So if I go in there and I'm like, you know what? That doesn't look quite right to me. I wanna change something in here, right? I wanna change one of these, these pieces of information. I wanna add something in. Well, that link, if you click on it then afterwards, right after you made that edit without you doing anything else, will give you that new PDF. It's essentially the same thing as if you were to go into here, click file, click export, or rather download as, and then PDF. It's the same thing as that, just a quick link to do it um, that you're being able to get provided directly into here. So it's actually the latest version of the document as a PDF whenever you click this at that moment. All right, let's see here. Um, can you share the Google search logo link? Um, yeah, so let me see here. I'll actually paste that directly into uh, the chat right now, right? Here we go, pasting into the chat. And again, this is right now for Tesla logo. So you would need to change out where it says Tesla logo 
Actually, you know what? I got you guys. I'll help you out. Q equals. All right. So what I'm doing is I just typed in big giant letters, the word query, right? So you're going to, you just replace whatever it says query with, uh, in, in the curly braces as well. You replace that with what you want it to say, as you can see in the first link above it. So definitely use that. Uh, but also realistically, the way you generate this, honestly, you just go, I'm about to get some questions about this. I know, but look, puppy, as you can see here, here's the link. You just copy this, right? And you just replace the word puppy with your variable inside your template and then boom, now you have a quick link to search Google images for whatever you want, right? Nice and easy. All right, what else here? Does a task generated to notify Rick use a zap or conditional logic? So that's a great question. So that uses conditional logic. No zaps required in this particular case. That is using conditional logic. You'll see it right here if I go into the template editor. Here's conditional logic right up here at the top. First off, what's happening is that the uh, deck created task is being hidden by default. So it's not showing up as soon as we get in there. Rick isn't getting notified as soon as we run the checklist because the deck hasn't been created yet. And then once create deck is yes, right? We're going to get this one and then we're going to get the QBR deck drive link that has any value we're going to show deck created, right? So once that has a value, which is going to get automatically updated by Zapier, we're going to show the deck created task and that will automatically then assign Rick and then send out the notification. And also, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but we got conditional logic, or rather, sorry, dynamic due dates here. It says three days before the meeting date, Rick needs to make sure that he's seen this deck, right? He needs to know that this deck has been created, that he can deal with it uh right here so that's dynamic due dates as well so this is conditional logic showing this task assignments here inside the template that automatically assign rick as soon as that task shows up because of conditional logic and then dynamic due dates that make sure that rick sees it um again three days out before the meeting or before then as soon as he gets assigned all right so how to run zapier link automatically going next step in process street um so the Okay, so I've got a couple things going on there. Um, actually, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking, but I'm gonna answer what I think you're asking there in a couple of different ways. First off, uh, you may be asking about the run link. I also wanna make sure I show that off just because that can be a little confusing. Pretty much what that is, if we click on share template and then run link right here, this link right here is equivalent to clicking run checklist. Uh, and you can bookmark this. Um, I put it in lots of places, right? But then if you wanted to pass data in like we did with the name of the client and maybe their client ID, we click on link options. And then any form field, right? Any place you're collecting data inside of your checklist will show up here as well as the checklist name. So you can say, you know, the client name, checklist name, you just click on each of these, right? Just like this. This is what that link actually looks like. Boom. And we've got the link. We've got these little spaces for variables, which is what we replace inside of close or whatever your CRM is, we just replace with their own variables. And then that allows us to have a link that'll grab data from our lead, pass it into this link, and then automatically run that checklist with that data without us having to do a single thing. So that's a checklist run link, okay? That's the first part of that question that I think you're asking. The second part you also mentioned, uh, the, uh, the run Zapier link. There's this one, right? Which is going straight to the editor of these different zaps just to show you what they look like. And then the third one, I think may have been a question that you guys had about one of the slides that I had here, which I believe is this one. There is a link here. We copy this address. and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in a new tab. If you go to this link, I've got a few of these built. If you go to this link, which I recommend bookmarking this if you use Zapier a lot, this will take you directly into making a brand new Zap. I use this every day. So this is the same thing as if you click on make a Zap, this will take you directly into a new Zap. Um, if you guys want a little bit of another sneak peek, I've got a couple of these. I got one for Google Sheets. That's how you do it for Google Sheets right there. You wanna create a brand new Google Sheet and get brought directly into it. It's almost like a run link for Google Sheets. There you go. And you've also got one for Google Docs. Uh, actually, let's see, create doc. It's that one. There you go. So you can do it for slides. You can do it for docs. You can do it for sheets. You can do it for Zapier. And of course you can do it for process street using the run links. These are extremely handy. I recommend bookmarking them or doing whatever else you need to do to get those working for you. All right. So what if your CRM is on a local server rather than cloud service like process street? Do zaps have issues with firewalls? 
So generally, any of these different services that you would be using, any of these different integrations, they do typically need to be cloud-based, not local, just because, again, I mean, if they're local, there's not really a way to, to access a local computer from the cloud. I mean, Zapier is a cloud-based tool as well, so is Process Street. Um, so you want things in the cloud to be doing this, okay? Now, there are some little things you can do here and there kind of to work with local things, especially if you have things being backed up automatically on a local computer, but realistically, it's not actually doing anything with a local computer. So you typically want to use cloud services. So if you use something like Office, right, you want to make sure that you're using Office 365 and not a local instance of Office, right? So that way you're able to have things automatically updating using the cloud service. All right, I've never used Google Slides before. Does it save your decks in Google Drive? How do you manage the different copies of the decks and PDFs? So uh, it does save it in Google Drive automatically. And you can set where you want that to go. And realistically, what a lot of people will do is that they will actually pass that deck, right? So as soon as we get here, they will just then, you know, use that and pass it somewhere else. Maybe they'll copy it to a different folder. Maybe they'll move it to a different folder. Um, essentially, they'll do lots and lots of other things, essentially just to move it where exactly where they want. Maybe it's Dropbox. Maybe it's, you know, anywhere else, right? So you can do other things with it. I, of course, kept it very simple and just stuck it right here. But you can also put it wherever else that you want as well. Uh, okay, so what's the secret deal for attendees? I've been on the fence for a while in order to get conditional logic and it becomes pretty pricey. So yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, realistically, our business pro and enterprise plans are more expensive than the standard plan. However, this is for Process Street specifically. Um, however, you're going to get a lot more than just conditional logic now, um, specifically because we've added in a ton of new stuff. Our developers have been working extremely hard on this and adding in new things. That's why it is more expensive, just because of the considerably additional uh, development work that's been done to create a lot of these new features. So conditional logic is in their role assignments. Uh, essentially, if you wanted, you can have a rotating assignment. So you can say that, you know, this particular task, these five tasks need to be assigned to the account manager. And then you choose who the account manager is once you run the checklist or you push it in using Zapier. It's a pretty cool automation that maybe we'll show you guys at some point. Uh, and again, it's gonna automatically assign those tasks to them. So that's pretty cool. Enforced order is a, is a feature called stop tasks. Pretty much what that does, is that just goes ahead and ensures that the process is being followed in the exact order that it's in and you're not skipping around or anything like that. And that also makes sure that your handoff, right? So uh, your handoff is being automated for you. So uh, somebody is gonna get notified about a task that they are assigned to only when all of the previous tasks are completed. That's enforced order. I showed you guys dynamic due dates, essentially setting really cool automated relative dates based off of lots of things. You can also do custom branding as well. Um, and that's all on the business pro plan. So again, you are getting conditional logic, which is probably the biggest feature of those, but you're getting a lot of really huge other automated features as a part of business pro, which is why it's a bit more. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much the thing you want to check out there. And of course, if you have any questions on that, definitely reach out and we're happy to help you on there. All right, let's see here. Where can I find more info on using APIs with Zapier or Process Street? Great. So um, in regards to using APIs with Zapier or Process Street, um, what you're going to want to look at is webhooks by Zapier. So Google that. Webhooks by Zapier. That's how you can build um, essentially API connections to all different tools, even if they don't connect to Zapier. Um, and essentially Process Street connects to whatever Zapier connects to, plus whatever you can build using webhooks by Zapier with Zapier. Because again, it connects to Zapier. Um, and that's how you're able to deal with it that way. We do have an API, um, but it is currently in beta and available to enterprise clients only. So if you're interested in it, do reach out, let us know. Um, but realistically, it's still in beta. It's not exactly at the point where we're uh, opening it up to everyone yet, that sort of a thing. Uh, so de definitely let us know if you're interested in that. We're happy to talk to you about it. Oh, someone said docs.new or sheets.new does that too. That's an excellent point. Really, really well done, Ari. Thank you. Can we get Zapier to reference either an HTML table or a JSON feed? Yeah, I think I found it with webhooks. Yep, so uh, pretty much with that, that's where you would want to use webhooks. Um, so it can reference pretty much anything as long as you can connect to it via webhook or the service itself in Zapier. Um, uh, definitely a JSON feed. Uh, that's definitely what you would want to use webhooks for. And yeah, you can absolutely pull that through. Uh, this is an excellent question. Thank you, David. Does everyone in the company need a separate Zapier account or can we use the same one for all our tasks in Process Street? That is the beauty of using Zapier with something like Process Street is the fact that 
you know, for process street, obviously, um, you know, for anyone that's going to be creating and editing templates or somebody that you want to get automatically assigned to things like this, like we have here on this task with Rick, they need to be members, right? So you're paying for each of their seats, but that's on purpose because they're getting all of that big benefit and they need to be able to use it that way. However, for Zapier, uh, you only need the one person or the one seat that is creating your uh, integrations, right? So uh, one person's coming into Zapier, they're creating the integration, right? They're creating the Zap like I did here. Uh, but then no matter who checks that task off in Process Tree, whether it be a guest, an anonymous user, uh, a member, an admin, anyone, literally anyone, uh, whoever checks that task off, it will trigger that automation the exact same. Right, so it does not matter. So you only need the one seat in Zapier. So if you wanna add Zapier to uh, your current uh, use of Process Street, it'll cost you probably at most 20 bucks a month more at most. Honestly, you can get really far with their free plan. Um, you can build you know, essentially two-step Zaps. You can have up to five of them. They can run up to 100 times a month. Um, so if you're using it less than 100 times a month, you can use it for free forever. Uh, if you're going to use it more than that, you're getting way more benefit than was worth for 20 bucks. So I definitely recommend in that case, of course, you upgrade and then you can get multi-step apps and you can use premium connections like Salesforce and other stuff as well. Uh, and of course, again, that's not very much and you only need the one seat for that. All right, I can answer a few more questions here. So uh, I got a great question here from Brian. Is there any way to exclude certain slides in Google Slides based on a process three criteria field? Or would you need different Google Slides templates to use with Zapier? So what I would realistically recommend with that is that you would, uh, you may wanna use different templates. You just have two different templates inside of, uh, inside of Google Slides, or of course, if we're talking about Google Docs and Google Docs, whatever service that you're using, right, to create something as a part of your automation, um, you may wanna have different templates just to keep it a little bit cleaner, right? And then what you can do is that that's where you may wanna use paths like we did for the other uh, automation, I believe this one right here, right? So um, for creating those notes, you may wanna just have a path where you're saying, you know, which condition is it, right? You can you just use a form field and process tree to decide that. And then based on the condition, it'll go down one route and use one template or it'll use the other one and each one of those has the right amount of slides. Um, there are other ways you could probably do that, but that's going to be a lot cleaner um, and it's going to be a lot less uh, error prone. So it's going to be a better way to do it. Use their paths, a uh, good way to go about doing that. Um, and if you got more than three, then just use a filter uh, and create a couple, a few zaps or however many different uh, versions of that you might have. Yeah, any, any plan to be able to pull images and videos from a URL rather than uploading? Um, yeah, so actually, again, another very good question there. Uh, so pretty much what you're able to do, as you see here, I pulled in these, uh, the deck here as a link, right? But you can actually have uh, an actual file get uploaded into here. I just did a link just so that I can click on it and show you guys. Um, and again, the real big benefit of the file, or rather, sorry, the big benefit of the link is that it's gonna be live updating, right? So as I'm going through here, you know, we update the actual checklist. Uh, rather we update the actual deck, sorry, uh, then you know, whenever you click on this link, it's gonna be the latest version versus a file, which will just be the version it was once you uploaded the file. But you can absolutely have a file automatically uploaded into a file upload form field. And that is this right here. So we can automatically do answer this for you the same way that it's able to fill out other form fields like this one. Uh, so you can do that already. That can be images, that can be videos, that could be um, whatever kind of file that you want can get automatically uploaded into your process tree checklist right there uh, into a file upload form field for you. But again, like I said, if it's something you want to have updates to over time or be able to access the latest version of, always use a link for that just so that way you can go straight to it. All right, so Bob here says he'd be very interested in seeing more about the web hooks. So that's kind of the advanced, advanced automations webinar, and I would love to show you guys that. Uh, that's where you get into some trickier stuff. In fact, you know what? Why don't I show you really quick a little bit of a sneak preview here. Uh, I actually just created one. All right, so I just created one using webhooks earlier today. Uh, literally right before this webinar. So every day, this is a schedule by Zapier. I recommend this, it's a pretty cool tool. Uh, for those of you that are getting stay, you're gonna get some extra special something here, right? So schedule by Zapier. So this runs every day, including weekends, runs at midnight. And what it does is that it formats the date time to be nice and pretty, like I showed you guys earlier, it's using Formatter. And then here we go, here's webhooks. 
Uh, we use a service called ChartMogul. You can use whatever you want, but ChartMogul is a tool for tracking uh, different things like uh, revenue, expansion, MRR, um, anything like that, right? So what it's able to do is you're able to track that information. And uh, the nice thing here is that realistically, you're not able to get as much information from the ChartMogul connection to Zapier. But if you use their API, like I did here, this is an API request. You just give it a URL. This is a get request. Essentially, we want to get some data. We give it some parameters. In this case, the interval is the quarter. The end date is today, right? So that's the end date. The start date is the beginning of the quarter. And then we give it some other information here. Then what we're able to do is pass this on and we're able to format uh, all, essentially whatever the, the output data is. This is essentially expansion numbers, those sorts of things. And then we're able to have it come in here and look up a spreadsheet row. I've got a tracking sheet for some of that customer data here. Um, in a Google Sheet, it's going to look up that row based off of uh, the date. And it's going to update that row with the number here, right? So it's going to actually format this down to a, uh, it's going to reduce it down by 100. It's in cents. And then it'll go ahead and update that row with that data. And I have that row doing some calculations for me, okay? So it's automatically updating that row. And then it's got calculations. It's doing some math for me. And then it's actually looking that row up again. So it's going to get the output of those calculations. And then sending a private channel message in Slack with all of those calculations, essentially as a daily update um, of our numbers to that sheet. Uh, to the sheet and then also to Slack for everyone else to see all in one place. And that happens instantly every day at midnight. So brand new thing that I just created, Matt is using webhooks right here uh, to get some information for us where we wouldn't otherwise be able to get it if we were just to use the built-in connection to ChartMogul. And again, if you guys are interested in it, we can also, uh, I can talk some more about this sometime. Of course, ask about it in our support and I'm always, always happy to help out there. Got two more questions here that I'm seeing. Oh, you're very welcome, Bob. Uh, two more questions here that I'm seeing. Uh, one, how does it know if it's raining to send a text? I think this is one from quite a bit earlier. Sorry for not answering, answering it earlier. Um, so pretty much uh, it, it's realistically in this particular case, uh, firing off the zap here. Uh, if it is going to rain, so if the, it, it's actually built into the utility itself, um, you could also just have it run and give you a forecast every day if you wanted to. But I have it built. I grab the one that's just, is it going to rain today? If it is, then it's going to run. If it isn't, then it just won't run. Uh, and then if it is raining, then of course it'll send you a text. So that's what I have there. But again, just a very, very basic way to use that uh, to set up a zap here just to give you an idea of how that looks. All right. And then uh, is there any exact term of starting integration with Integra, Matt? No, not the moment. Uh, realistically, like I mentioned, is it's not something that is on the roadmap at the moment, but is something that uh, you know, we may be interested in doing in the future, but here's the thing. If you would like to see that, if any sort of, you know, improvements to the platform being process street, uh, whether it be an integration to a particular service or, uh, or to something like Integromat, or maybe just an improvement to the platform itself, go right here, bottom right hand corner, click on help, suggestions, and please, 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 please suggest it because that is how we make all of our product decisions here at Process Street is based off of your suggestions. So suggest it. The more people suggest it, the more likely it is to happen. So definitely check that out and, uh, and let us know because that's how we're able to decide whether or not it happens. All right. What is exactly the difference between Process Street and Zapier? So Process Street is a process uh, centric tool. Essentially, it's a place for repeating processes, anything that you do more than once um, that you want to record information for. Since you want to, you want to type some information in. So you want to have form fields, places to say, you know, what the client's name is, how a particular meeting went, all those sorts of things. Um, it's essentially a place where you're kind of running through it, running checklists to say, yes, I did this. Yes, I did this. Um, automatically sends notifications using assignments, sends reminders using due dates, right? And then Process Street, realistically, we use kind of as the hub is kind of how we recommend you use it, right? So it's it, checklists automatically get run, ideally, if you have it connected as a, you know, to a trigger in Zapier. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, in Salesforce, you can change the lead, uh, change a lead to a customer. That could be a trigger that then runs your customer onboarding uh, checklist, uh, runs a customer onboarding checklist inside of Process Street. So as soon as a new customer comes in, right, immediately all the people are gonna get assigned and notified and due dates will be set and data will get pushed in from something like Salesforce automatically. So then all that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a notification one morning, you'll say, oh great, I got a new customer, cool, let's start the process. 
And then you go through and all you have to do, if you've then connected everything to Zapier on the other direction, so with actions, uh, then we can just start checking things off and kicking off your automations to do everything that you would otherwise have to manually do, but automatically having it get done for you by way of Zapier, right? So pretty much the whole point here is that Process Suite is the hub where you're controlling things and you have influence over it. You're you know, putting in all of your different form field decisions, you're communicating back and forth with your team, you're setting due dates, you're getting reminders automatically. Essentially, you're tracking things this way, right? And then in the background, you have Zapier sort of running um, a lot of the manual stuff that you would otherwise have to do, connecting out to the other services that you would otherwise have to go into, but you don't ever have to go in them anymore, right? So you realistically only have to go into Process Street where you're going to automatically get notified to go in there. You're just kicking things off and then you're just coming back in here, you know, to just say, okay, great, close it out, update Salesforce with all my notes, and then that's it. You never have to go checking all the other 10 services you use and Zapier handles all the rest in the background. And can it also be used as a CRM? Yeah, so you can use Process Suite as a CRM. A lot of people do. Um, I do recommend, honestly, uh, depending on what, what kind of needs you have, uh, having a CRM as well as Process Street, uh, just because a CRM gives you a better way to sort of look at customers almost like a spreadsheet, right, where you kind of have um, a customer and then all of their data that way. And then anytime you need to run a process, right, so they're onboarding, they're uh, implementing their services, um, you know, sending them an invoice, whatever, you use Process Street to do that. So you can use a run link, you can use automated triggers using Zapier, whatever you want, automatically kicking that off and going straight into a particular process for a particular client and having a CRM sort of as a, as a repository of customer information. However, depending on how many customers you have, I'd say for lower numbers of customers, you can definitely just use Process Street as your CRM instead. All right, another question here from Ari here. Would you say that you replace any other project management tool or do we still need both? Well, that comes down to, at the moment, that comes down to uh, what sort of things you do for your customers or for your projects, right? So Process Street is built for your repeating processes. So you do something more than once, you keep doing it, right? Even if it's a little bit dynamic, you can use conditional logic to handle that, then you can just use Process Street. You don't need to use anything else. However, if you do things that are extremely customizable, uh, you know, where you just, you know, you're kind of doing a task that you're only ever going to do once, then you may want to consider using a different tool uh, as well as Process Street. I mean, you are going to absolutely 100% have things that you're going to repeat. No matter what business that you have, you are always going to have that, whether it be hiring your employees, offboarding them, bringing on your new clients, uh, doing your accounting, your taxes, I mean, anything. You're going to do it more than once. You're going to need to record that information and then ideally automate it, right? Now, uh, obviously, if you've got something you're only ever going to do once, you may, may need to use some other service as well. Um, but it's, I mean, it's honestly a little bit unlikely. Uh, but a lot of people use both. Some people use both, you know, two different services, that sort of thing to handle one-off tasks and repeating processes. But the real big benefit of Process Street is that you can automate a lot of that stuff that you would be doing every single time you need to run that process. Whereas with a one-off task, there's really no point in automating it because, I mean, you're just doing it once. So uh, I definitely recommend, of course, using Process Street and then deciding whether or not you need another one-off task service on top of that, but you might not. All right, and then do you have a way, uh, webinar link showing how to pull information from a web form and add to a CRM? Uh, so realistically, uh, pretty straightforward on how to do that. You can, of course, use lots of different web forms. You could even use Process Street as a web form, uh, but it could also, also use you know, Typeform, Google Forms, Ninja Forms, whatever else. Uh, you can have that as your web form, and then automatically from there, you can have that through Zapier, maybe running a checklist with all of that form data. Maybe you need to do something about it. Uh, and then you can have it getting pushed into a CRM as well, or maybe after Process Street or at the same time, whatever you want, right? And then uh, essentially you can pass that data very easily the same way that we did all this stuff here, um, setting up these very basic apps here to make that done. So definitely something that we could look into adding in. All right, so I think that is about all the time we have today for our questions. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to submit them through the app using the help right here, boom, let me turn this back, there we go, help, and then contact support. Hello, there we are. Click on new conversation, and then you can reach out to our wonderful customer success team. They're all over the world, they're amazing. Definitely reach out, say hello. Uh, you know, they're happy to help you at any time. I'm also on that, so I'm also happy to help you, of course. 
Uh, but reach out to them and you can also email support at process.st. It's the same thing. You'll go to the same place, uh, whether you want to email us support at process.st or just come into the app while you're already in here, click help, then contact support and start a message. If you ever get a message like that, uh, like that robot message that you got from me right here, you can also just reply to these and it'll go to the same place. We give you lots of options in terms of ways to reach out to us, to ask your questions and we want them. Please reach out to us. We want to talk to you. Uh, and I also recommend checking out our help site. That is process.st slash help. Okay, process.st slash help. We have documentation on this, okay? So if you go there, you can also pull all of, all of those different things right here. Search for help, Zapier. Look, there we go. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to search for Zapier. Look at all these articles, all these wonderful things. We've got closed IO, pipe drive, type form, IT glue. We've got Salesforce in here as well. Lots and lots of things. How do you connect this? How do you do the things I talked about today? Check those out. It'll tell you all these things that I mentioned here. Uh, so check those out there. You can also go to zapier.com slash help to check out their help site. Uh, I'm just going to plug them for a second. That is an excellent help site as well. Uh, so do check that out. That'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know as well. And then uh, definitely reach out to, again, reach out to our support. Uh, and if you are either A, a paying customer already of, pay, of Process Reads, you're on the uh, business, business pro or enterprise plans. Um, if you want some help, some custom uh, building with you on this, we are always, always happy to jump on a call with you, including me. I'm happy to jump on a call with you and go one-on-one -on -one and help you out with what it is that you are trying to build, no matter how complicated it is. Always, please jump on there. Let us know. You can write into support and say, hey, I really want to, I need some help with this thing. I don't know how it goes. Or I just want you to kind of take a look at my processes and see if there's any way I can automate it because that's something that I love doing. So definitely reach out and we're happy to jump on a call with you. Again, if you're on the business, business pro enterprise plans, or if you're not on one of those plans, just consider that if you were to upgrade that you do get at least one hour, if not more, rather one call, uh, sometimes up to an hour typically, uh, of time with us and a lot of times more than that uh, us working with you doing one-on-one -on -one help on all this sort of stuff so definitely uh, make use of that because we're always available for you so definitely reach out and try and get on a call with us so we can get on and help you with your automations with your processes whatever you need definitely reach out we're always here to help you guys all right so we're going to be sending out a link to this recording of this webinar <laughs> within the next few days uh, regardless of ever whoever attended so as long as you registered you're going to get a recording of this uh, and I'll also include some links to some of the stuff that I used here. So some of the process read articles that are going to be helpful, some of the Zapier articles and Google Slides articles as well. Uh, and once again, it's, once it's fully processed, we'll send that out. Uh, and again, let us know if you have any questions, definitely reach out, get on a call with us. Always happy to help. I hope this was very helpful for you. Um, I really appreciate all of you registering and attending today. I know you guys are all very busy uh, and I hope that these automations can help you guys be a little bit less busy. All right, thanks again. And please have a wonderful rest of your day.